Life-Changing Dads, where we encourage husbands and fathers to lead, love, and live. Game Tony on. Nolan, welcome to Game Changing Dads. Thanks, Ray. It's a privilege to be on Game Changing Dads, and uh, I want to learn myself how to be a better Game Changing Dad. So good to hang out with you. I am right there with you, buddy. Well, let's do this. This is how we start out the show. So in a quick snapshot, tell us about Tony, where you grew up to where you are today in about a couple minutes worth. Gotcha. Not a problem. Go way back. My biological mother was a mentally insane homeless prostitute. I was born in a mental institution in McClinney, Florida, um, placed uh, in a very rough, 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 rough foster care system, got all kinds of abuse. It was nutty. I got adopted when I was four. Uh, we grew up in a ghetto. My dad and expectations, realities clashed. He turned to alcohol to um, kind of anesthetize all that pain that he was going through. Had drunken rages on me. He would beat me all the time and tell me that he, he wished he would have never um, adopted me or he used the word bought me. Um, you can imagine that left me with a bunch of uh, pain in my heart. My neighborhood was a very frightening neighborhood with my cousin getting his head shot off with a double barrel shot off shotgun and it gets worse from there. Um, I wrestled with suicide, didn't want to live. Was, that neighborhood scared me out of this world and my dad's uh, words crushed me and ruined my world. And later in life, somebody shared me the, story, the incredible story of the gospel with me and I got connected with it, and I wasn't a gospel guy, man. I mean, at all. But man, I heard the story: God come to earth through Jesus. You know, we we talk about it at Christmas, and uh, He offered joy to the world, and uh, I, I connected with that. And uh, He came and healed the deepest wounds of my soul, and then all of those self sabotaging habits that I had from drinking and drugs and all those things that were trying to fill up holes in my life that were unfillable, except with Jesus. Um, man, what a game changer. And so, I mean, he cleaned me up from all my booze and all my addictions, uh, connected me with the most wonderful girl in, on the planet, Tammy. We've been married for 25 years. We have four children, ages 21 all the way down to 11, uh, who is really a trophy of the grace of God because me, a former orphan, was so radically changed by God that I was able to go and adopt an orphan myself, my wife and I. And really, my whole family was a part of the process. And her name is Joy Fepe, and she does bring us great joy. Um, I, I try to live my life uh, to pour into other people um, that are Christians, um, to help them step up and let's do this thing together because it's so tough. But then also share uh, just a right representation of Jesus to a world that seems to have all kinds of whacked out ideas of who he is, be it, you know, you know, some far right uh, bigotry things to, you know, uh, far left hippie stuff about Jesus. So, you know, we try to just shoot it straight from the Bible and, and keep it real with people. And what a joy to have the opportunity to be on your show and share a little bit about that. Awesome. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, Tony. Let's go back to your connection. And, uh, you know, someone led you into the gospel. Someone led you to Jesus. You yeah. know, for, for that connection, uh, you know, what were your other influences at this time? Were you running with a particular crowd? You know, wh what were the people around you? And where did this person, you know, was it a friend? Was it a family member? Yeah, great question, Ray. Um, I had actually just come out of a moment in my own life where my expectations and realities clash. And dads, we have those moments, especially professionally. And I grew up very poor in a ghetto, had nothing. I remember going to the public schools and pu pulling out my free lunch ticket, which we easily qualified for welfare. And uh, I had nothing my whole life. And then out of nowhere, I, I literally landed a job, a high paying, luxurious job as a yacht captain for um, a man by the name of Paul Hudiberg, who owned mega car lot dealerships in Oklahoma. Anybody in Oklahoma knows him. And um, he had a 89-foot um, Ocean Alexander yacht with two um, twin T turbo 892 D diesel Detroits in it. And, uh, and he said, take me around, man. I'm, I'm running from winter. 
And so he gave me two credit cards with revolving bank accounts and paid me with cash. And um, the startling deal that I learned on that journey from going to every exotic port of the lifestyles and the rich and famous on the East Coast of America that you can go in was this, that money makes a good servant, but it is a horrible master. Mm. And I watched him and his world be absolutely miserable. And as a ghetto kid, I was stunned. How in the world can anybody acquire massive amounts of affluence and means and yet have issues and troubles like I had growing up as a kid, be as mm. miserable as I was as a ghetto boy in a neighborhood, ghetto neighborhood. So anyways, that, that led to me just clashing with suicide. Um, ended up landing me in a mental institution myself for a couple of weeks in Goose Creek, South Carolina. And then a stepbrother came into my life and shared the story of the gospel with me. And it, it changed everything, man. Was it a, was it a, just an aha moment right then and there with this fellow or was it, did it take some time to sink in? Oh, he came after me for months, man. I, okay. <laughs> come after me and I, would, I would be in these drunken rages and I'd say things to him that quite frankly, I can't say on your show. I don't think you could beep him flat, fast enough. Uh, and he would hang up on me. I'd hang up on him, but praise God, man. He never, he never quit. You know, I was hard and rough and, he never quit. He kept inviting me to come to a church function. And I thought the roof was going to fall in. I thought lightning was going to strike me, you know. I was out there raising all kinds of cane. And, um, but, you know, one night he, he persisted, called me, and uh, I, I went. And um, they gave me coffee, a lot of coffee. They <laughs> had their own drug, that coffee drug. And um, that sobered me up. I heard them share a message of Christianity that I'd not heard that because my mindset was this. I, when I was a kid, I went to church, but not because I was in the church. I went to church on a, on a church bus that came through my neighborhood, but it was just to run from my dad and get away from my neighborhood. Mm. And, uh, and so when I went one time, the pastor was preaching hard about everything that every, everybody's ever done wrong. And he mentioned all these things like lust and drinking and lying and pride and fighting and uh, anger and I thought wow I'm I'm all of those things I'm, I'm everything that the church is against <laughs> and um and then when we went home uh they prayed on the church bus but I didn't pray because I wasn't a Christian and when the pastor's son saw that I didn't pray during their prayer time he punched me in my mouth I mean right in my mouth man and um I, I usually retaliate and wanted to stab him with a pen man but um he, uh, but I couldn't, I was arrested. I was wiping my, my hurting lip, but my heart was hurting worse because his dad just said that Christians were the representation of God on the earth. And now I was doing the math and the math said that this Christian just punched me. Therefore God just punched me in my mouth. And so I never thought that God was anybody I could ever turn to in my drunken rages and, and my, my pursuit of trying to be successful um, pressing through the stresses of life. I never thought that God was anybody I could ever turn to. And then I finally heard that actually he came for the messed up people. He mm -hmm. came for people looking, direct, looking for direction. He came for the people that might be overachievers looking for success to show them where they can really find it. And, um, and I did. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I, I love the, you know, the planting of seeds. Uh, you know, the harvest doesn't come the next day. I'm a true right. believer. And prior to us recording this, I, I talked about, you know, my, my, my Jesus walk, you know, literally took me a, a year and a half, two years for my neighbors finally after invitation after invitation. So if you're listening to this, you know, don't give up on your neighbor. Don't, don't give up on your spouse. Don't give up on yeah. your friend. Keep walking the walk and plant yep. the seeds. Absolutely. Right, right. Love that. Well, let's yeah. fast forward a little bit. Sure. So you become a dad, you know, yeah you got kids talk about the relationship with your kids compared to, uh, I don't want to backtrack on what you went through, but I know there's, there's probably a lot of folks that had baggage and literally yeah. is still holding that baggage today in their current families. Right. Tell me, tell me about your transition a little bit. 
Yeah, great question. And um, I was petrified that I would be a reproduction of my dad. And, uh, and I want to rewind just a little bit. My dad was a very, very hard worker, and he provided for us the best he could. He just could never get ahead. And so with that, you know, he turned to alcohol. Uh, but I'm grateful for the fact that today I have a hardcore work ethic. Um, I'm not slowing down, going at it. And, um, and he gave that to me. So I am grateful in the middle of all the hell we went through. There's some good stuff that came out of that. But I didn't want to become the guy that, um, you know, speaks very hard to my kids, uh, stirs up anger in my kids. Um, insecure about myself and therefore can't celebrate the giftedness of my kids. Mm. Um, just so many different things. Um, I didn't want to be the guy that um, wants to be interesting to my son at the expense of being interested in my son. And there's, wow. a, there's a great difference. And so, um, but I had no capacity to overcome those things, except that God made me a new creature in Christ, mm. you know? Uh, he literally did. He did this transforming work inside of me that gave me a mind to begin to compartmentalize things like I just did, assess situations like I just did, and then to look at the landscape of my family and put systems in place, um, embrace particular disciplines by having accountability and um, relationships with men who have already gone before me and have done it well. And, um, and then to embrace the adage of um, J.B. Hunt, who was asked about success uh, when he made his first billion dollars with a bunch of young men going, hey, what's success? What is success? And how do you get there? And he said, okay, here's the deal. Find out what you want. Find out how much it's going to cost. And then pay it in full and in advance. Mm. So I had already learned I, I'm not really concerned about the money thing. I mean, I'm going to go out hard after God. I'm going to be a good steward. Um, I'm going to work. I mean, I, and I did. I mean, I had nothing. I was living in a van. I would knock on people's doors. I would mow yards. I would clean their toilets. I, I would do their laundry. Anything I could do to make money because I wasn't going to be lazy and I wasn't going to go back to what I was. Um, and so I carried that into my, my dad job and uh, go hard at it, put together some disciplines um, have some accountability, know some margins, and invest daily in, in, in my kids. What I want is, at the end of my life, I want to leave a legacy. I think mm -hmm. the greatest legacy I can leave is in the heart and life of my kids, that there might be something that I'm doing that they would want to emulate, that they could, um, you know, be world changers. Absolutely, man, that is awesome. And at Game Changing Dads, we talk a lot about accountability and action, and you said it. You know, when we can find men that are walking the walk and understand relationships and, and dive into that on a deep level, not that, you know, I don't want to say the sports level, but been there, done that for years. I mean, you know, our, my conversation with friends pre-Jesus was, hey, you know, did you see the game? Did you watch the game? Yeah, you know, we're depressed. We lost. Yes, we're happy. We won. You know, let's go to work. But there was never, there was no deepness to our conversation. You know, when I started getting around real men that were following God, man, that could pour into me. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to do that to best of our knowledge right now and just pouring into these guys, uh, you know, into these people right now, which is awesome. Love that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, hey, let's get into, let's get into family. So you're, you know, I was on your website today. You're, you know, you're, a, you're an author, speaker, just a, out of control. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be Tony. Uh, that's my, that's my little story. <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, I've had some great run-ins with your daughter prior to even know you guys were related with her mentoring my daughter as a photographer. So talk about, you know, your business, your ministry, and how you incorporate and, you know, work with your kids uh, during all the craziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a mouthful. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's beautiful. Um, you know, um, th there's a difference between um, time management and time mastery. And time management, uh, oftentimes, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock will tell you what to do. Even though you think you're, you're, you're managing time. 
and time mastering, you tell one o'clock and two o'clock and three o'clock what it's going to do for you. Mm. And so I've always put, okay, this is my time I'm having my daughter date. This is the time I'm having my son date. Uh, my wife and I date on Tuesday nights. Um, when we were touring, it cost thousands of dollars for these buses. I'm, I'm not Tim McGraw and Justin Beaver, man. I don't have money for all these buses, but I would just supernaturally provide because I wanted to be committed to my family. So I took them on the road with me. Um, you know, and each one of them are different. I know what Christy digs. I know what she's into uh, because I'm interested in her. She shared those things with me. And so in going off with her, it wasn't, okay, come do my thing, but let me do your thing. And may I, may I be able to see life through your eyes? Same thing with Will. Same thing with Bradley. Same thing with uh, Joy Faith Fame. And, um, and, you know, if there's one place in my life where um, I feel the most vulnerable still, it's with um, my kids and being a, a dad, being a parent, because the journey's not over. Um, parenting is nothing like mowing your yard. You know, you mow your yard down here in the south man you got that lawnmower you go this way and that way and this way and that way you create these beautiful clean lines you use your weed eater clean it all up it's perfectly manicured go grab your sweet tea you can look at that finished job and go ah this is so awesome can't do that with my kids <laughs> no <laughs> you know it's messy the reality is is adolescence is not an illness but it can make you sick i mean you know um it's uh it's a it's kind of wild you know being a dad to teenagers you know, they say that they're a lot of, they're a lot like vampires, you know, they, um, they, they sleep all day, party all night and, you know, suck the life out of you. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I have are. a kind of a younger family and I totally, totally get that. <laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, it's a trip, but in, in the deal, um, what I want to gain is that at the end of the day, when they do leave the door. Uh, and even prior to that, that there's a place at the table that they invite me to sit and they want to glean from me as they're navigating through the gauntlet of their life. Mm. So whether it's me and my friends that's had a fight, man, dad, what do I do with that? Um, our dad, you know, all the guys are looking at porn on their phones and, you know, I, you know, there's some things arousing up in me and I, how do I push back from that? What are some margins that I, that I uh, need to have in my life? You no, know, I'm like, Phew weeping man thank you god that my kid just came to me for that and um and and there's no big giant secret because this is not rocket science nobody's splitting atoms um it's just taking time and yeah. the the ministry of presence presence being there and when i'm there being attuned to what it is that they're talking about um, instead of my big lecture that i want to you know give them on how I think life would be so much better if they follow my route. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a constant adventure and it's one that keeps me on my knees, uh, calling out to God for his power. And, um, and what a reward like now my son is at, we just did a new ch change of ministry where the new church, uh, serving on staff, still going around and traveling, but it's really cool to see my son up there playing keys and in the worship team it's really cool to see my daughter has been serving you know on staff there for mm -hmm. a year now um um she's engaged to get married they're going to get married in october her fiance and i have that relationship he invites me to the table to speak into his life um my youngest daughter's um teacher came to me tonight and said hey she enjoys her class but she goes back into the other class with a, a three and four year old and she's doing crafts with them and leading the lesson and, um, you know, it's just really cool. And then I have my 15 year old who serves in the parking lot ministry. Uh, but I'm pretty confident he's, he's just scoping out girls when they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's just, you know, I'm, we've not arrived, man. We're still navigating this thing. And, uh, but it's so, it's, it is very rewarding. It's tough, but yeah. it's, um, it's rewarding. But, you know, the conversations, the relationships, the listening, instead of the talking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I heard this quote the other day, you know, that's why we have two ears and one mouth. Yeah. And, you know, I know early on when I was a parent, yeah, it was just, but I'm thinking, you know, I remember saying so, so many of my friends, going, just listen more, listen more, listen more, because that's what they need. And you, you, man, you built a, a fantastic 
that's an awesome foundation. Uh, love that. Leading by example, no matter what. And uh, yeah, like you said, we're going to go through crazy times. I, I totally get it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, kudos to your, your, your kids and uh, man, what you're out there doing. It, it is pretty incredible, bud. Yeah. Well, go God, you know, Ray, I think that your listeners will agree um, that we really are no more than uh, what God gifts us to be. Um, I even mm-hmm. think that there are guys out there that aren't really connected with God, but they, they they'll tend to say, hey, "I I was born with a God given ability." Are their are their grandparents have told them that as they dove into sports? Um, uh, maybe even had a coach look at him and go, "You know, God gave you that gift, son." You know, I, I believe we're no more than what God gifts gifted us to be, but but also what we become as a result of other people's investments and. Um, and embracing uh, their their input, uh, accepting their feedback, and then reorienting spaces of my life where I need to step up and grow, or uh, really honing in on my on my strengths and playing to them well. So I'm really really grateful for the guys that have taken time to pour into my life over the years. Uh, they saw something in me, and uh, and and a lot of them are already in heaven. And uh, I'm mm-hmm. just trying not to waste their investment. That is awesome. Investment. Love it. And you are, I mean, bottom line, I'm preaching to the choir, but you know, you are who you hang around with. Yeah. Been there, done that on both sides of the fence. And uh, yeah. yeah, the one side is not fun. Mm-mm. Well, let's do this. So I'm a hockey guy. I don't know if you know that or not. Well, you did comment on the jerseys, but they are hockey jerseys. I know we were talking That's- about baseball earlier. That's okay. I- yeah. <laughs> so we do something at practice called rapid fire. This is where I line up all the pucks. And if you want to be my goaltender tonight, I'm just going to fire away and uh, hopefully you have good equipment and we'll be okay. But I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. If you like to pass, y'all pass, we'll kind of move on. All right. First question in our rapid fire favorite book. Um, I would have to say it's uh, I am not, but I know I am by Louis Giglio. It, yeah, it's it's really cool it, because uh, God is center stage. It's His story, and we're just playing a supporting role. Amen. That's good. That's good. Number two, favorite quote. Oh, one of my favorite quotes in all of the world comes from my wife when she says, "Hey, baby." <laughs> that's it. That's wow. It. Hey, baby. I have hey, baby. not got that one yet. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. That's it. I'm like, you, you can keep Churchill. You can keep, you can keep. Love it. Love God, it. You can keep all those quotes. I don't give a rip. My wife I, need, I needed someone to shake up the show, and you're doing it there, yeah. sir. Keep it real for us dads. Come on. Amen. Amen. Number three, favorite husband moment. Oh, my favorite husband moment. Um, and there are so many of them, but... Um, I would say that uh, just recently, my wife has um, uh, achieved the arduous and prestigious accomplishment of national marketing director and her uh, franchise called Juice Plus, where she empowers uh, some people that are in ministry who don't make a lot of money uh, to be able to build up their finances and all in the middle of a community that's helping take care of uh, helping to take care of people's health. Uh, amazing, amazing deal. It was super, super hard for her to get there, but uh, we all as a family jumped in there. But I had my husband roll, and it was tough for about four years, man. But go oh God. She done Absolutely. It. Great job. That is awesome. Number four, favorite dad moment. My favorite dad moment had to be the moment that my whole family um, and I were – um, ex- expanding our family in Beijing, China. And we had not seen our little girl that we were adopting yet. And they made a big deal of it, put her in this big ballroom. And we walked in and it was the first time we've, we've seen her. And um, I, there was not a dry eye mm. from coming from anybody in our family as we knew that this was a journey that literally we were led by God to do, inspired by others to do. And, uh, and empowered by many to do. And, uh, and to be able to sweep that little girl up off of the streets of Beijing 
and to uh, to enter into our world and raise her, um, knocking people out of birth order, uh, having you know we had to adjust for Mandarin Chinese and cultural changes. I mean, it just shifted everything, but but the whole family stepped up, and I just thought, wow, this is a killer dad moment, man. Mm. And, uh, it's been a perpetual one because um, you know the stresses are there, the the um, inconveniences are there. There's so much that's in there, but yet at the end of the day, um, it's it gives all of us an opportunity to get over ourselves. Absolutely. And, and when we can tip over that, then we get into others. Amen. That's good. <clears throat> Number five, uh, favorite. What was I thinking? Moment. <laughs> You can pass on that if you like. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to pass on this. Um, it has to do with um, a, a dare and Mexican food <laughs> and, and, and habanero peppers. And I really don't want to talk to it, talk about it much more than that. <laughs> that is perfect. We totally get the big picture there. <laughs> Biology comes into play, but we don't want to go there. Absolutely. That is awesome. <laughs> Uh, number six, and this will be, uh, actually, I'll ask you where people can find uh, find you after this, but uh, share one piece of awesome game-changing advice uh, that you can share with our listeners tonight. An awesome piece of game-changing advice. Well, um, I remember the, the first uh, session that um, I had mentoring um, Major League Baseball player Albert Pujols. Um, a, a person of that is bent towards succeeding and is a competitive person um, has to be very careful of two things. Number one, that they do not get derailed by all of the other people that come into their life. When you begin to be successful, hmm. um, they can create other scenarios that might look like your success could even be more successful. You connected with their success. Don't get derailed off of your lane. Stay in your lane. And the second thing is, is as you expand in your success, it, it's very interesting how many more individuals seem to uh, pop up into your life and you build relationships. And a lot of them are relationships because you want to continue to grow. You don't want to die. You want to keep growing. You want to keep expanding. But you have to be very selective and ask for discernment, get discernment on who needs to be on your relational bus. Because not everybody needs to be on your relational bus. Um, so I, I think those two, those two things are crucial because we've got, I think, all the systems and more systems that we can say shake a stick at for getting from point A to point B. Uh, I think most people miss it or they get disillusioned or they back off their goals because they got they were de derailed and they um, they allowed some people on their relational bus that sh they should have never gotten invited on because some people get on the bus we think it's okay but the next thing you know is you're driving the bus but they start giving you and you know directions and yep. then that turns into uh, they change their sh their seat assignment now they're sitting up front and before long they've got the wheel. Mm. And you have to really be careful. Um, so I would just encourage your, your, your listeners uh, to do the same, to make sure that you're reading things and you're gleaning from others to help you in those two areas. Make sure you stay in your lane. You do not get derailed. And what can you read? What can you absorb that will give you the capacity to build your discernment of those people that you are making partnerships with to expand your influence or your success? Man, that's good. That's good. Tony, I appreciate that. And uh, real quick, where can people find you? Um, well, you know, I do live in Florida now. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're talking about any of the, um, the social media networks, um, I have Facebook, there's Tony Nolan Live. Um, we, I think we already have 5,000 followers there, so we had to create a page. It's called Enjoying Jesus. Uh, that's some people's cup of tea. I think there's 80 something thousand followers there or something. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Instagram is, uh, Tony Nolan live and, uh, Twitter is Tony Nolan live. So 
follow me, I follow you, and uh, maybe you'll find some helpful things to help you navigate being a game-changing dad. Awesome. Tony, thank you so much for your time tonight. We'll give it a wrap from there. And uh, once again, we uh, greatly appreciate your time tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. Sounds good to me. All right. Have a great night. God bless you and your listeners.